can't eat the water. I can't tell you who's thirsty. I don't know it right now. Cold. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Anything that was that he considered cheap, that was always his. Yeah, I'm honest. 
It's okay. You don't have to.
Let me have your attention for this moment. There's going to be a video up here with some special family pictures. If you want to come and see it, Thank you. 
People taking to make sure I'm doing my job. Yeah, and then they to make sure I'm doing my job.
But I like to. How is that the picture? All right, so that's how the picture looks. Hey, let's get in the shower, we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right here, I want you to sign the bit of stuff, and then I want you to do me, each of you gets one of these, and you, you need to write down three things, three things you yeah, probably. I know I have I'm not the This is just the I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm I'm <laughs> 
I got video of the photographer.
Michelle and April are our cousins. We grew up very close in a very close knit family. We were more like brothers and sisters than cousins. We were together all the time. And the one thing I want to leave you guys with was Michelle. She was non judgmental of anybody. She loved everybody equally. And my challenge to you all is to love as equally as she. You can't judge a book by its cover. Just because you think somebody doesn't work a certain way, dress a certain way, or smell a certain way, doesn't mean they're not real. So I would challenge you to pick up Michelle's characteristics of pure love. And we're going to say a short prayer here. I'm going to leave this off in the mic. But today's a celebration. I had the privilege of baptizing Michelle about four weeks ago. And my question was, Michelle, are you ready to meet your maker? She said, absolutely. So when you know where somebody's going and you know where they're going to spend eternity, this is a celebration. That's where we're all striving to get to. We're all trying to get to our maker. And so remember her life. Don't remember her death because she would want you to remember who she is, you know, who she was, what her legacy was. So if you'll bow your head real quick, we'll hand this off to Mike. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to come and celebrate Michelle's life. Even though our selfish hearts didn't want to let her go, we know she's sitting there in heaven with you. And what a wonderful place that is. We thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. The weather's tremendous. We just ask today that you would guard everybody's heart and mind and that you would turn their focus onto what Michelle's true love was all about. Father, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to, can you come up here? Yeah. You can just get louder? Even on this side. Are you going to come over there again? Okay. <laughs> can I, oh, that's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you know, Golly, how long was it? I, I am not good with those kind of things. But let's guess it 26 years ago. I met Michelle. Um, I actually uh, worked at Blockbuster Video, and she had, you know, when I really, like, met her, met her, she had broken her dad's VCR. And, you know, I'm like, sure, bring it in. We'll try to fix it. Of course, I couldn't. But but that's kind of where we kind of introduced ourselves. And then we, we kind of met each other at a, uh, a pool hall. And, you know, it's not really, you know, a pool hall bar. That's not really where you, uh, you know, you're supposed to meet people. But when, you know, she told me, I, I asked her for a number and she said, uh, I don't do that at bars. So she came and she uh, she saw me at work uh, the next day. And I don't know that we were separated much from then on. And, uh, you know, we I don't think uh, I don't know if it was even eight, nine months before we decided we want to get married. 
And, uh, you know, I'm not saying it was always easy, but I was happy most of the time. And uh, I got three wonderful kids. And, uh, you know, I, I, we, they just seemed to all hit us at the right time when we needed them. I mean, you know, and I, uh, I, I'm, I'm so happy to, to kind of have her in my life and to have celebrated all the things we did. And uh, uh, I, I know she's in the right place. She told me she was. Um, Saturday, we, we had a good talk and we talked about those things. And uh, she said, you know, I told her, I said, it's okay. Jesus's arms are open and you can go. And uh, um, she told April that uh, she told, where is my, where's April? Tell me what she told you. So I knew she was ready and I knew she was going to a good place. And uh, that's all I can say, really. I miss her already. Um, does anybody like to say anything? You can chicken out. It's okay. I wanted to. This is my oldest daughter, Kaylin. My first. <laughs> and I liked her so much we kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from a little awkward and comfortable, never thought my first time public speaking would be here. But I guess that's one more surprise my mom could throw at me before she uh, hit it. <laughs> but there's one thing I think about about my mom. It's the way that she taught us to love unconditionally. When I think of my mom, all I can think of is how no matter what we did, no matter shenanigans me and my sister got into, no matter if I tried to drown her or stick a hairpin in her ear, <laughs> she was always there at the end of the day to say, hey, I forgive you and I love you anyways. And no matter what you could do, I'm always going to be there to love you. And I think everybody that she came in contact with could see that. Her doctors would all the time tell us I've never met a more positive patient throughout all of this. She was the most positive, most patient person I've met in my entire life. And if there's one thing I can take from her, I hope it's that. And I hope that you guys are able to do that as well. And to remember her as a positive and beautiful woman that she was. All right, I think that's enough tears. Thank you for coming. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it's like an open table. I'm gonna take it if it's available. So let me get my thoughts together here. Find the scrolling down. I am Michael's mom. So I've known him for quite a few years. So Sam Davis, this is my mom. <laughs> So I remember when Michael brought Michelle to meet Jim and I, and Jim's my husband. We were so excited. We were so happy. They were so happy together. They were a very beautiful couple. And um, so one year at Christmas, I asked Michael and Michelle what they wanted for Christmas. And they said, well, let us think about it for a little while. And then they called back not too long after that and said, we know what we want. I'm like, okay, what is it? And they said, we want a high chair. We want baby bottles. And that was, where is T, where is, where is Kaylin? That was when Kaylin was born. And um, so very, very special, very special. Um, so it was equally as exciting when along came Hallie. And then after Hallie, there was Tegan. And they're, they're just, they're beautiful girls and, um, Michael and Michelle did a fantastic job bringing them up. So my favorite, my favorite time of the year is Christmas. And I loved it when they came to visit at Christmas. The last time I talked to Michelle was on Mother's Day. And I told her I loved her. And um, so Michael told me that she could hear me, that her eyes were moving. And um, that, was, that was a really a hard day. I will miss you, Michelle. Rest peacefully in your next beautiful home.
All right, that's enough. Thank you for coming. Um, I I couldn't ask for anything more, and I'm 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 so humbled by all of you. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. And if I could ask anything from you, it would be to to stay in touch, pick up the phone, don't think it's too busy, make those phone calls. Um, people need to hear from you.